Paul said, when I saw that he walked, this is, you know, a man of great stature, Peter. The man who preached on Pentecost, the rock. I said unto Peter before them all, if you, being a Jew, live after the manner of Gentiles, why are you now forcing these Gentiles to become Jewish proselytes? If I build again the things which I destroyed, you know what a chief sin is in the eyes of God? This one. If I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a sinner. How about that? It means when you put the law back up there and the traditions back up there and you regress into a previous behavior pattern, that is a very serious sin. It builds up what Jesus tore down. And then he says in the very next verse in Galatians 2.19, because I through the law died to the law so that I could live unto God. What's he mean by that? That's something millions of Christians have never found out because they're really traditional Judaizers. They live by rules. They live by custom. They live by convention. They live by tradition. They're afraid of their brothers and sisters who put pressure on them. And that's very natural, but you've got to overcome it. And Christ in you can help you to overcome it. And you'll do it a little bit at a time. <clears throat> and every time you obey and learn through suffering, your strength and courage will grow so that you can set more people free. And when we put those things back in place in order to please our peers, as Peter did to please James and his party, you tear down what Jesus gave his life to give us. Freedom, fruitfulness, creativity. That's why I enjoy people dancing on the platform here. It's a whole lot better than having some old prune that's been drinking pickle juice stand up and read the creed for the 3,418th time, don't you think? That can get kind of boring. And I promise you I'm going to close with this. I... Uh, went to a church that has a new pastor, a lay pastor. He's a marvelous man. I was back again this year. We had a terrific time. <clears throat> and he took over a work that another lay pastor down in New Jersey had given over to him. This man, whose name is Mike, is a really fine pastor. Uh, remember, a lay pastor, a very successful businessman, too. And he said to me, Brother so-and-so, who used to rule over this work, when I mentioned that I wanted you to come and speak, which in fact he did, and we had a fantastic meeting, he said, Brother so-and-so rose up in holy alarm and said, we can't have Brother Morgan come. Now, of course, this is spoken many times, as you know. <laughs> and Mike said to him, well, why in the world can't we? He said, I've had him before, and he greatly blessed us. He said, a little bit crazy, but he blessed us. And the brother said, we can't have him because on Sunday morning he said bullshit in our pulpit. <laughs> and Mike said to me, Bruce, did you say bullshit in his pulpit? I said, yes, I did. He said, why did you say it? I said, because there was plenty of it around in that church. Now you know what happened in that church that had a lot of bullshit? When I said that on Sunday morning, there was a guy down front who'd given a testimony about how he and his wife had cast out the spirit of pumpkinitis. He was afraid of a jack-o'-lantern. Isn't it wonderful to live with such holy boldness? You're afraid of a pumpkin that has teeth cut in it. I tell you, if you're scared in those circumstances, you want to sing, We Shall Overcome. <laughs> and this guy, who was the associate pastor to my dear friend, who was a wonderful man of God, in that church where there was a lot of bullshit, 
stood up and gave that stupid testimony about how he's cast out the spirit of fascination that had inhabited his child because the child liked to look at a pumpkin. Do you know why the world thinks Christians are absolutely out of their... They're not playing with a full deck, you know what I mean? And so that's why I said it after I heard that. And I went home and the pastor said, he was a naughty person too, he said, I couldn't, he said, I couldn't enjoy the service. I kept thinking about that damn pumpkin. <laughs> now, you know, I wouldn't say a thing like that. The pastor said that. And I told the pastor, you better keep your eye on that guy. And you know what that man did? He rose up and he created an internal revolution in that church and he overthrew the pastor because the pastor had a certain deviation. They thought they could stomp him into the ground. They almost murdered him, and I'm not kidding you. Thankfully, the pastor is a therapist and he's living in a southern state today and has a rich ministry and he and his family are happy, radiant, and moving on with God. You know what happened to the church where there was a lot of bullshit and the guy took over because he wanted to be pastor? It's closed up tight and the doors are nailed shut. Praise God. There are going to be a lot more of them. Jesus came to set people free so that we can love one another and know who you are. And this is the bullseye of the Christian life. This is the righteousness that God wants you to have to develop over a period of time and it takes time. The capacity to hear and obey God's voice. And it only comes that we learn obedience as Jesus did. Though he were a son. He learned obedience through the things that he suffered. And being made whole. He became a pioneer of eternal salvation. To all who believe. Shall we bow together in prayer.